Hi, and welcome back to part two of our Toon Shader in the Babylon Node Material Editor. I am Nick with the Babylon JS team, and without further ado, let's get right back to it. So starting off from our previous shader, uh, we have a two-tone Toon Shader here, and now we want to add our specular highlight. I'm going back to Roy Stan's tutorial just to get a nice visual aid. So a uh, specular highlight, uh, we can see it in these examples here, are these little blobs, these little lobes on the on your model that it, it represents the shininess of something. So if you've ever looked at something shiny, uh, like say, for example, this uh, mouse here, you can see the shiny parts here from the lighting in the room. Um, so that's different from the diffuse lighting, which is more of like the 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 color light, just how colorful this thing shows up uh, when rendered. Um, everything has diffuse, everything has uh, uh, specular, some sort of specular highlight. And so in our tune shader, we want to try and exaggerate that specular lobe. Um, we don't really want the natural specular highlight. We, we just want to know if it's like lit, if it's like shiny, or if it's not. Um, so a uh, little bit of background for this. Um, this is the, if you've ever taken a graphics class, I'm sure you've seen this plenty of times. Um, we are interested in, uh, N is our surface normal. L is the direction to our light source. V is the direction to our viewing source. And of course, uh, we are going to use this half vector here in our ca calculation, which is essentially just, uh, if you consider this to be a uh, parallelogon and you add V to L for the opposite sides and L to V for the opposite sides, it should reach somewhere around here, which is exactly the same direction as H. So H is just a normalized V plus L. And you can see this in his shader calculations here. Uh, we're going to skip past the diffuse for part one. He added ambient. That was uh, our last part of part one. And finally, we want to calculate the specular reflection. So in this, his, his calculation for specular reflection is he wants to, we take the dot product of the normal vector and our half vector. That represents just how much our normal is pointing in the direction of the half vector, which is the lighting, the light source and the viewing source. So if all of these things point in the same direction, so if our light source and our viewing source, so if we're looking at our object from uh, uh, if we're looking at our object at the same direction where the light is shining on our object, we should see something really shiny. Um, you can see that very well if like, uh, if you look at the backside of a metallic spoon or something or anything shiny, uh, you, you'll kind of understand what, what I mean. And so if the light source, the viewing source, and the surface normal all point in the same direction, we should see a very strong specular highlight. Um, so. Let's try to represent this equation here using the no material editor. Um, essentially, uh, I already explained n dot h and the light intensity, which is the diffuse light intensity. So that's just generally how much light is shining on this object. Is it shining on the surface of the object and how well is it shining on the surface of the object? So not only does it, the light source and our viewing source need to align, but also our light source and the surface itself needs to align and we multiply it. And so that means that the surface normal is a uh, 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 quadratically applied in this. I, I believe if we expand this equation, we'd have uh, n squared or some, some vector permutation of that. <laughs> okay. Um, and finally, we take that to the power of how glossy our object is. So how essentially shiny the object is considered to be where something dull like the surface of uh, the wall here is not especially shiny while uh, again our mouse here since it has that very strong specular highlight or my ring here since it has a very strong specular highlight will be considered especially glossy Whew. okay so let's get back to enemy and let's implement this so starting off we want to create our h vector so we can create the h vector by taking, uh, a, uh, so sorry, we need v to create our h vector. v is our view direction, so we can get that through a node, view direction node here. Uh, we want the world position here. And finally, we're going to normalize this to make sure it is length one. 
Um, as I explained in part one, uh, it's important to normalize your vectors before doing any sort of dot product, as the dot product isn't just uh, the angle. Uh, let's do a quick Google search just to fully understand what the dot product is. Um, dot product is the sum of the products of the corresponding entries. Uh, sorry. It is the product of the Euclidean magnitudes of two vectors and the cosine of the angle between them. So if your vectors have magnitude not one, um, you will have a dot product that is not the cosine. So it's very important that when we're using the dot product in such a way that we want that angle, we want to use the cosine, we should use unit vectors. Um, but you already knew that. You guys are great programmers. Uh, so this is normalized V. And we want to calculate H, which is L plus V, normalized. So let's add L plus V. And this is H. And let's normalize this again so that we get a normalized half vector. Very important. OK, so um, and also, in case your nodes ever get not too well organized, you can just quickly reorganize it. Uh, with very complicated node trees, it's important to know that you know exactly what you're doing here. All right, so now that we have our h vector, we can calculate n dot h which is our, it's hard to explain. I'm going to call this our specular factor, even though I'm not sure if that's exactly what it means. Um, so this is H. Uh, sorry, I like doing, uh, we grab N here. And this is normalized N. Dot H. And finally, we also want to multiply by our uh, diffused lighting intensity, which is the quantized n dot L. Oops, we don't want to leave this page. Careful. So multiplication node. And we're going to multiply n dot H by our uh, lighting intensity. And I would call this uh, our specular lighting intensity. Or it's not quite the specular lighting intensity because we haven't taken account the glossiness, but I'll call this our true specular factor. How much is the specular light contribute? How much is our specular coefficients contributing to how well this surface is lit? And so now we can grab our POW and we're going to raise the specular factor to the power of our glossiness squared. Um, I know you're asking, why do we square the glossiness? And the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's not exactly the answer. Um, the reason being, uh, as Roy Stan uh, explains, um, you just you square the glossiness factors so that you just uh, you can use smaller glossiness levels and you can express way more without you know uh, using some ridiculously large glossiness factor. Um, it, it just lets you uh, just have a tighter bounds on what are reasonable glossiness factors. Um, so this is going to be an input float. And we're going to rename this to be our glossiness. We're going to grab a multi node. And we're going to use this to square the glossiness. And we raise our specular factor to that power. Perfect. So now what we can do is uh, we can test. So if we grab the handy dandy vector merger, we can just grab, or sorry, this is a color, so we want to use the color merger. I'm just going to grab RGBA, or just RGB, 
And that's going to be our new fragment RGB, just for testing purposes. And we get this beautiful flicker effect. I'm not entirely sure why we're flickering. This may be an issue with our graphics. Um, I've noticed that. Oh. Ah. Interesting. Let's try a different mesh. I'm not entirely sure why this is flickering. Um, I just tested this earlier, and I didn't notice the flickering. Um, hmm. Okay, so let's recheck our work here. Oh, right. Uh, it could be flickering because we never added a glossiness factor. So um, let's add a factor of one. There we go. So if we use a factor of one, uh, you can see things get shiny as we start to uh, highlight, as we start to align our view with the light. Um, likewise, uh, we get this hard cutoff because we're using the diffuse lighting and we're multiplying by that. So wherever that's zero, we don't get any specular highlight, which is great. And so this looks like it works pretty well. Uh, I think the only thing we're missing at this point is our tune effect. So right now this looks pretty realistic. You're seeing some surface information from the uh, shininess. If I increase this coefficient, our lobe should get smaller and more powerful as you can see here. Now less of it is getting specularly lit, but when it does get lit, and you can keep your eye on this part here, because uh, as this starts to align more with the camera and the light direction, as the view direction aligns more with the camera and, and surface normal, we get a stronger specular lobe. So we can up this even more and even more, and you start to see a more and more pronounced effect. And that's exactly what we want. So looks like our shader is working properly. Um, great. So. The last part to do here is we want to tunify this. So what we can do is take our specular intensity and we're going to use our handy dandy step node. And the step node will allow us to uh, uh, quantize this value. So in case it's over a certain edge value that we define, I'm going to start by using an edge value of one. Um, and I'm using a separate float uh, setting for the specular and diffuse cutoffs because, hey, what if you want to adjust it? So now let's attach our specular cutoff. And finally, let's uh, attach the output of the step note to our color merger. And, ooh, R, G, B, and A. And as you can see, now we are not quite seeing much. So let's make this a very small, much better. So as you can see, uh, originally, if we just use a cutoff value of zero, I believe that uh, even with our quantization of the normal vector, we still have like this in this tiny bit of a, uh, uh, it's equal to zero. So our, our specular intensity at all, uh, all pixels on our fragment is zero. So it gets rounded up to one. And so what I chose to do is just add some very, very small value, even 0 0.001, 0 0.01. There we go. If we add this small cutoff, now we finally have uh, what I describe as properly speculative node behavior. And we can increase this value, we can use 0.1, but I like the effect that we originally had before we quantize, so let me up it to 0.5. There we go. Now we get a nice small concentrated specular, no specular lobe, and it looks like it's per behaving properly. So, looks like now we can plug this into the rest of our lighting calculation. So we have our ambient light, we have our diffuse light, we add the ambient to the diffuse, and now we want to add the specular to our uh, diffuse, or to our diffuse and ambient. So let's do, uh, let's grab the specular uh, quantize We're going to add the quantize, or go, first we're going to calculate our specular lighting color. We're going to use yet another input color to represent our specular color. Um, if you want to use the color present in your scene, you can use the light input color. Uh, but due to uh, 
There's a good reason why I don't want to use that for this, just because the light here has intensity of one, so we won't be able to see the speck of the highlight well. But for when you're using this in your games or other multimedia experiences, you can just use your light information and it will pick up. Uh, it should be able to process for each light that's contributing to this object. It'll run this whole shader calculation and add all the different lights together. And you should get a really nice tune effect. All right, so let us scale our color by the uh, specular intensity. And we'll call this our specular lighting calculation. And we're going to add that to our ambient and diffuse calculations. So add specular plus ambient plus diffuse. Perfect. And now if we set this as our fragment output, we should get our full lighting calculation. Uh oh, as I was saying before, um, we want to tone down our diffuse light now because our specular light, uh, we only like everything is a, a, a clamp between zero and one. So if you have light that's more than one, uh, you, it's, you don't see it. It doesn't show up as any brighter. And our specular lighting is here. Cool. Cool. What is going on here? Um, let's just try toning down all the lights a little bit more. We should be able to see the specular highlight a bit better. So we'll tune this down and see right here, it's showing up now. I'm going to turn down the diffuse light just a little bit more. Uh, use a diffuse factor of around, let's say like two thirds to three quarters. And that should give us a nice tune highlight. Beautiful. All right, um, so there's one last missing part of this. We have lighting calculations, but we don't have, we're not taking into account the surface color. Um, so let's first just reorganize. Perfect. And we're going to take our lighting calculation and we're going to multiply that by the surface color. So let's get a multiply node. And we're going to multiply light by surface. And our Right can be our mesh color. Uh, do we have a mesh color? Oh, right. Um, what is a color? This is the material. We need to define the color of this material. So if you have a texture, and you remember uh, David's uh, 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 previous tutorial on how to use texture as your mesh color and using your fragment shader, this is where you input it. Um, you're going to use that as your right component, and the output will be your fragment shader or it'd be your fragment output. But since we're not using a texture in this tutorial, we can just flub it with a color three. So here's our, light, here's our surface color. And let's just recolor it to my favorite color. Nice forest green. Ooh, ain't that beautiful. So uh, this is our tune shader. We have a two-tone tune shader, uh, unlit color, uh, we have a lit color, we have a specular highlight, and this is the end of part two. So if you like this tutorial, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe because we have plenty more amazing content coming out. Uh, we want to make Fun Friday a huge part of our team identity and how we uh, interact with you, the users, and give you cool content to check out and consume and figure out how to make the most out of, out of the Avalon engine. Um, so stay tuned for part three. I'll be showing you how to add the rim lighting effect, um, and it will be amazing. So uh, have a nice day, and as always, keep doing cool stuff.